What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyt, and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titans action spawning in the bottom of the map in the red color, playing as Kronos. His name is Miracle. I'm looking for a miracle. Miracle. And he's picked Kronos. His partner's today in the purple color. Playing as Loki, his name is Nullis. And finally running out the team in the blue color. Playing as Odin, his name is Count Von Coat. The countiest of counts. Uh, and the, their opponents all together, they make the team JSS. 2K for Jesus, if you guys were wondering. Their opponents today in the green color playing as Set. His name is Joe. Playing as Set. I'll say it one more time. Playing as Set. This is the second set we've seen in this tournament. The other set was by yours truly, and we lost terribly on the map Sea of Worms. But nonetheless, it was fun, and set is in here for Joe. I'm excited to see what he's going to be able to come up with in this game. His partner's today in the light blue color, playing as Loki. His name is Scotty, and finally rounding out the team in the yellow color, playing as Thor. His name is Shelty the Shelton Snake. Shelty the Snake Shelton. As we do see, ooh, that's brutal there. Shelty getting deconstructed on this location, throwing his house down, saying, I've got a butt ton of wood right now that I want to be in fishing ships. But that's just the way the cookie crumbles. As we say, Kronos OP. Honestly, Kronos is pretty overpowered. There is a solid argument, a, a, a real solid argument that Kronos' deconstruction shouldn't be able to, uh, shouldn't work on a dock. And let me explain why it shouldn't work on a dock. The reason is that a dock is a, a resource gathering point. So you shouldn't be able to use your deconstruction on any resource gathering point. That, that I, I'm... Let me start again. That there is an argument for that, whether or not you believe it or I believe it, remains to be seen. But there is a hundred percent. It's the same. It's the same argument as Bolt shouldn't be allowed to use be used on a rock because it wasn't allowed to be used on a uh, on a transport ship. So there is there is that. So we'll see how things are going to eventuate in this game. But that's just me riffing about random changes that you know probably could bring just that little bit more balance to the force uh anyways we'll see how things are going to go dock is up now for shelty shelty can double dock over here but i imagine scardy is going to take it giving the double dock over to the loki player seems like a fantastic idea but nullis here is playing loki as well he's grabbed his own dock over here and it seems to me that the uh that had uh, our our Odin player Count Von Count is getting the short edge of the stick in this matchup, and this is all because our main man Miracle has taken this back shore and allowed Shelty to grab the side shore over here. So it's not good, but it's not bad. The best situation here for JSS would have been the Cronus player sitting in the middle, and then the uh, and then and then maybe trying to grab this one, this one, and this one. But you know, it is what it is. What can you do? Not much. And we'll see how things are going to happen. As we do see, yeah, this is always going to happen. So this is the thing. If I thought I did this already. If Shelty can't get to the classical edge fast enough, this dock is simply just going to fall. And then Miracle can grab this location for himself. And guess what? What you can do if your name is Miracle is you can build the dock here and then time shift it up here. Big brain. That's some of the biggest brain shit ever. Let's see if Miracle's going to go for that or not. It's going to be so big brain. He still hasn't built the dock, so maybe he hasn't thought about it. But let's just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying it. It's big brain. Scotty now building some more fishing ships out here. He's got a lot of villages on the wood over here. Just getting himself sorted in this game. We do see the dock up. or oh, the temple up on this side by Count Von Count. Going to try and take this location out. As we see Joe just saying, three docks, no problem. Three docks, no problem. 50% of the way through to the Classical Age as the Ursa are coming in. Going to be able to clean up this villager over here. Say, so not today, Sunny Jim. Not today at all. We see the longhouse coming up over here as the Valkyrie is going to try and chase this villager down. I would assume as uh, Joe is going to make a quick, a swift retreat back home. 
We check out what's in the base. We see the villager, the monument of the villagers coming out. Lots of villagers on the gold. This probably indicates a far second town center here from Joe as he's pushing forward with his priest and his auroch looking for something to do on this location. Meanwhile, Doc going down. Will it go down fast enough is the question because if the longboat gets out, there, are, I mean, it's probably still going to go down. It's probably still going to go down. You've got to imagine there's a, there's a longboat out. You're probably going to just say, no worries, I'll finish this off. We do see a big vision in onto this location over here. We do have the Shifting Sands coming in. Forest Fire onto this location here from Shelty. A beautiful attack here from Team DOD as Count Von Count's villagers going down all across the map. Count Von Count reacting super slow there. One, two, three dead villagers. A fourth villager almost getting picked off here. As Joe retreats back, the damage has been done. Beautiful play there. As now we see Scardi moving in onto this position. This, this troll on the front gold mine of Count Von Count. Count Von Count in an awful position right now. As Nullis is so far out of position here. Going straight after Shelty. Shelty's in a tough spot here. He's got himself Hursa out to deal with the... Uh, with the Prometheans, though, as the Raiding Cavalry can deal with everything else, the Doc has been taken out. However, as it looks to me, as if Count on Count, he's got a ways to go to figure it out in this game. He's going to be cleaning up this final Doc over here. As Joe just says, I don't even care about the Doc in this situation. I'm putting pressure onto you. I'm killing you. And you're going to say goodbye. And Joe's going to say hello going forward. He's on the hunt over here. He's living the dream on this map. Even And he's getting himself Axeman out here as we see the Hursa pushing forward. The Dwarves retreating into the town center over here as the Sentry Tower is going to get taken down on this position. We see the Hursa coming in over here as the Gatherer is going to get taken down as well. The Hursa pushing in onto this position, looking to take something out here as the house gets up over here as well. The Hursa retreating back. Hall of Fanes on the way for Nullis as well but is it too little too late has the damage been done is count on count too far behind he does get water control over here so he can build these fishing ships which he does have five fishing ships five fishing spots we still haven't seen miracle with the dock over here which makes me so absurdly upset he's playing chronos you have time shift just do it just do it as we see the longhouse Getting taken down over here. Longhouse is coming up here for Count Von Count and for Nullis as Count Von Count making his way over onto this gold mine here. We'll see if Nullis is going to be able to figure that one out as the Axeman coming through here to try and take down the Hursa. As another Longhouse coming through for this uh, spot here. Count Von Count grabbing that one as fast as he possibly can. We do see these houses getting taken down now as Valkyrie spawns coming through for Scott. He's going to be very happy with that. He's got the docks up. He probably should have these fishing spots grabbed as well, but he has not yet grabbed those here. He's, in fact, he's taking villages off of wood in favor of getting onto the hunt here. He's probably, oh, he doesn't have himself any upgrades there on the hunt. A little bit of a mistake there by Scotty. I feel like staying on the, on the wood for just a little bit longer, getting the rest of those fishing ships out and then getting himself hunting dogs would have been the play. But uh, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily matter. He's still in a great position. So too is Miracle, though. Miracle and Nullis are still very far in front here as Count on Count struggling. But Shelty's not... Well, actually, to be honest, Shelty hurting just a little bit. He's moved back into his base over here, grabbing this gold mine. He's lost his longhouses as Miracle is cleaning Shelty up in this game. Shelty having a very, very tough time of it in this series thus far, thus, thus far as Miracle searching around for something to take out here as basically a uh, big fight coming through, but the Pharaoh Priest combo here from Joe gonna help out a ton moving forward in this location as the uh, the Scardi Aniar should be a very, very big help, but it looks to me like Joe simply just, oh, this town center was a very big mistake here from Joe. That's seven, well, 500 resources down the drain there by Joe, which could have been thrown into Axeman here. And he could have hard won this fight but instead, he went for the town center. Scardi and Joe go for the fight there. And that's really, really going to be hurting Joe moving forward as JSS is finding themselves yet again in an advantageous position in this game. We see Shelty now searching around the map for some raids. Meanwhile, we've got Scardi pushing it over here. He gets the Ani Aspel, and that's going to help out a ton moving forward in this fight. Be beautiful micro here from Scardi trying to snipe down the uh, the Hursa as best as he can. But nice micro there by uh, Nullis as he pulls the Hursa back, turning around, going to snipe down that. Hursa as well keeps the Hursa alive moving forward as Scardi not paying attention here is going to be losing this one as well and those Hursa will heal back up to full HP meanwhile on this position we've got plenty of units getting pumped out here by Scardi but 
Nullis is in such a commanding position, pushing forward here. Where is the, where are the raiding cavalry going on this position is the big uh, big question here. We see the crazy amount of miracle units pushing through here. These are Kronos myth units, which do have a slight buff. If you take a quick look here, they get a little bit extra, a little bit cheaper gold, wood, food, favor cost, and um, and speed comes in. As uh, we'll see how. It's going to go at, uh, at this uh, this one as the Raiding Cavalry have to push back. Uh, Shelty probably would have uh, been in a much better benefit had he gone through Forsetti and just made Hursa here. But he's gone for the Raiding Cavalry instead, still in a very, very tough position. As Joe 2 not helping out all too much, but he is the first player on two town centers. So he will be finding his footing moving forward. But the question is, will JSS, will it matter? Because JSS can, if they can... Focus down this town center. It's going to be a very, very tough time here. Count on count has found his footing somewhat moving forward in this game. He's grabbed this gold mine. He's chucking up buildings all over the place, trying to get himself the economy here moving forward. As we see the Hursa on this position getting taken down, as Joe says, get off this gold mine. It's not for you. This gold mine, I claim this gold mine. As we see a Townsend actually coming up for Count Von County. He's made himself a bunch of Odin Ulf Sarks. He still doesn't have the upgrade, which makes them speedy, but he does have those. But I don't think that Ulf Sark are the choice here. There's Raiding Cavalry. He needs those to deal with those Axemen moving forward in this game, but does not have those as Joe and Scardi happily sitting on this position. But... But Nullis is going Braki here. And also we see Miracle going Rhea here. And guess what Rhea means? Rhea means forward temple plus he has access to those beautiful, beautiful behemoths coming forward here. And he's going to be able to clean up this town center very, very easily. Shelty is not long for this world going forward here as we see more military buildings coming forward. We've got the temple in on this position. Uh, Miracle just needs to turn around and take this fight. For some reason, he's retreating even though he's got the stronger army moving forward here. But Shelty's got some confidence going forward there for some reason as uh, we see a whole bunch of Nullis buildings in onto this position. There's the Mythic Age. Oh, sorry. Heroic Age going through. Four Nullis drops the flaming weapons here onto this position. The question is, can the Axemen win on this uh, front or or not, uh, as they are mostly all getting taken down, as Nullis is getting further and further in front. We see Scardi retreating back, Bragi on the way, but Rhea 80% of the way forward. We see the units retreating away from here. We'll see uh, if Miracle can figure this one out. Moving forward here, he's just about to hit that next age, maybe feeling a little bit like he should have waited before pushing in. He's taking a lot of damage coming forward here, as Feral's actually was maybe misclicked there as the behemoth in this temple for the time being. Townsend are getting grabbed here as Shelty has really flipped the script moving forward here. As the unit's pushing in onto this position, we see a forward temple trying to come up for Scardi. He's got a temple over here as well, so he doesn't really need it. He will be getting the battle balls coming forward very, very shortly. But this Flaming Weapons is just about out, and there will be a return fire. Flaming Weapons here for Scardi coming forward in the near future here. So we'll see if that's going to be much of a help going forward. Nullis should be thinking about going to the Mythic Age very soon here. Probably best bet would be to go through tier here to hit everyone's economy. As Miracle hurting just a little bit, retreating back over here. We see the villagers grabbing this location a dock has been thrown up here by shelter i think that has to be a has to have been a mistake there by miracle to allow that so shelter's economy is actually not that far behind here in this game as the promethean turning around going to finally decide yeah they can take this fight which they probably could have taken ages ago as the behemoth decide it's go time coming into this position there is only one her so the town center here for shelter will be falling there's another town center over here as the behemoth are queued up, but it looks to me that the town center will fall. Nice play here by uh, by Miracle in order to take that one out. Meanwhile, Shelty getting what he needs to get done, but there's the Mythic Age on the way by Nullis. He's going through tier in this position. Axeman taking down the Ursa as best as they possibly can. Anya spawns here for Scardi coming through as the Axeman pop in onto this position, trying to take down those uh, those Axemen, but guess what is coming here? We do see a bunch of battle balls here for uh, um, Nullis, but he's going to have, he's got 98 favor. 
98 favor moving forward in this game. And that means Fenris Wolf raids are on the way. These Axemen are not going to be easily utilized against those Fenris Wolves. It's going to be a really, really nice transition here for Nullus. If I was Nullus, throw down three temples or something, make the Fenris as soon as you possibly can. Immediately cast yourself in the winter and just live the dream. Coming forward as Scardi does choose to cast himself flaming weapons in this fight, but he really doesn't have that many Hursa here. A bit of a waste if you ask me. As if you count these Hursa here for, for Scardi, he's only got three that I can count. There's no other real military units here as the Fimble Winter does get dropped raids coming in onto this position over here as well. We've got the Fenris, the Fimble Winter Wolves not hitting over here. Not uh, did they hit over here? No, Shelter gets off scot free here, but. Joe getting uh, getting a little bit of harass on this location. No harass over here just yet, but uh, that's going to be helping out Nullis a ton here. If we if we check out the temples here for Nullis, I haven't seen him start the uh, the Fenris Wolves just yet, but it's probably an idea as the town centers need to get grabbed immediately here. Fire giant spawn though for Nullis is going to be so absurdly effective moving forward in this game as the troll does get taken down. And we see the palace coming up for Miracle over here. The Mermillo getting picked off on this position here. The Mermillo over here going down as well as the medium throwing Axeman coming in over here. We see the Mermillo retreating back. Helios on the way now for uh, for Miracle as he decides it's time to do something just a little bit different. There's the minions coming in here for Joe. Uh, as he sees these dwarves, says, I want to pick those off. There's a lot of economy here that these ancestors can get some value in. Shelty, though, in that position, decides, game's done. JSS, too far in front. Like, look at look at Nullis' score. He is 3,700 score moving forward, forward in this game. He's got two fire giants, and simply put, Simply three fire giants, excuse me. That's a crazy amount. And simply put, Scardi is just too far behind here. He's just not able to catch up. I'm not sure why that happened. It's a it's a Loki mirror. Loki mirrors are coin flip. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. Sometimes one player just gets to the mythic age first. It's just the way it goes. Our armory upgrades are in favor of Nullis here. It seemed to me that if Joe didn't go for two town center here and just went full Axeman, one town center set, he would have been able to support Nullis pushing, sorry, support Scardi pushing forward here with Axeman, and then Nullis wouldn't have been huge here. Count on Count wouldn't have been able to defend himself. He would have had to have made Raiding Cavalry, which would have been a perfectly easy composition for them to fight, but because Joe went two town center here, 500 resources effectively down the drain. If you compare what 500 resources are in compared to what Axemen are, take a quick look at the resources here. Do the math. You've got a 70 resource unit here. You could have had like, like eight Axemen out instead of the town center in that fight, and it would have been, it would have been GG for DoD effectively in that situation. But alas, DoD didn't do that. JSS gets the dub levels the series one to one. We've got a series here, ladies and gentlemen. Love that. If you guys are enjoying this game, checking out the uh, post game first. Checking out what the uh, the tributed resource. Not really that many here. Uh, units killed, lost. Look at Nullis's kill loss is gigantic here in this game. The big question really does come down to the uh, oops does come down to the the, uh, the the all resource total and look at that total advantage there by JSS. This is why they tap out here. It's 66,000 to 54,000. That's a big, big difference in a team game. If you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTubes, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next game.